I used to have hung up in uh, the upstairs room. I made it. People are often unreasonable, irrational, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you're successful, you will win some unfaithful friends and genuine enemies. Succeed anyway. If you're honest and sincere, people may deceive you. Be honest and sincere anyway. What you spend years on creating, others could destroy overnight. Create anyway. The good you do today will often be forgotten. Do good anyway. Give the best you have, and it will never be enough. Give your best anyway. In the final analysis, it's between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. And that's a quote from Mother Teresa. There was a magical combination, the mixture of these three women that in their presence, labor, hard work, effort, but mostly joy and love that I think they made the center for yoga. They made the center for yoga. They were the heart. Jacqueline Kozak, Sally Lloyd, Katie Brownfield. It was a pleasure to go there and hear Jacqueline's laughter down the hallway or to have some wisdom from Sally the guru in the projection room were to look upon the sweetest face, a smile, a presence of innocence, truthfulness, kindness, generosity. I treasure them deeply. How could I not? In the intense competitive yoga scene in Los Angeles, which I never wanted to really intermingle in the trendiness of. But in the wallows of all these teachers, these ladies made me feel seen, respected, wanted, appreciated, and there are no words to express the gratitude, the profound gratitude for each of them. Hi, Kimmy. Hi. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Gorgeous. Hi. Gorgeous to you too. It's so <laughs> nice to see you. So good to see you. What's are you going on? Oh, pandemic, man. <laughs> Sucks. How is it there? It's crazy. How's the pandemic yeah. for you? Are you still in LA? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, it, I never stopped really working. I mean, we did for a month, but that was it. Um, hey, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Katie coming? Yeah. <laughs> Katie. Katie, is that you? Yeah, can you see me? Yeah. Oh, thank you guys for doing this. This is so fun. I told Dean it's like hanging out with the ladies tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't bring wine. I should have brought wine. We could just hang out, but I do have a purpose. For yeah, absolutely. Okay. Which is I am tethered somehow to Center for Yoga and collecting stories and memories and thoughts. And I, I'm not going to start this session crying. I'm not. <laughs> but I have to say that the three of you, I can't tell you how many people, it's like the three of you at different times, but then there was also this magical time where you were all together. You were all together, yeah. And there was something in that combination. That's the time that I remember the most. And I think people really resonated with that time. And you three, especially, like your names keep coming up as heart-centered presence. I feel, and I'm not, again, not going to start crying. You guys are like the heart of the center. Many people before us that were the heart of the center too, I think. Yeah. I think for our time. Yeah. 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 Like our era 
our time. It was a magical time. It was like all of the students who came in had a certain character. It, it felt magical. It did. We saw so many Kirtan guys coming through. Dave Stringer and Krishna Das actually used to come into the upstairs room. I mean, can you imagine that now? It's like every everything is being completely destroyed for something else to happen, I think. Yeah. yeah. I have to say thank you to you three. Sally, I think you got me the job. Whatever you and Jan said to um, Lisa Hasse, I credit you as giving me my start to my career. Oh, come on. You were great from the minute you started teaching, you know? I mean, you were so obviously a teacher that uh, there was nothing that was going to stop that. I certainly didn't, uh, you know, if I did anything, I was just, you know, standing and applauding, <laughs> you know? Why was Center for Yoga such an important space for you? Or was it an important space for you? I mean, for me personally, I feel like it's where I did the most growth personally. And I'm going to cry now. You know, I was such a strict kind of, and, and I still have aspects of that, but that black and white manager, you know, that everything was black and white, you know, and I remember one day you just said to me, you know, I think you just need to be kind to yourself. Like you don't have to change it. Just examine that. And my whole world changed, my whole world. And I, I'm not saying I don't struggle like any, any human being, but it was maximum growth that I had as a human being. So grateful, Sally. Uh, if I said something, it was only because it, it, it lived in you already. All of it is, is you. You were ready to take off, you know? It never had anything to do with me. It's all about you and uh, yeah. you and God, you know? <laughs> because you allowed me to be in that upstairs room. That, that was my little, oh, I love that little haven that you gave me, you know, that was such a perfect perch. I could see Kim downstairs. I could see anybody who was downstairs. I could, you know, I always remember running around when the time change came and, <laughs> and changing the clock, seeing if I could beat Kajaya to it. Um, <laughs> I bet he appreciated that. <laughs> changing I forgot all about that yeah oh, coming in on those Sunday mornings and just running around like a maniac you know trying to get it yeah. you know and and trying to lean out the upstairs window <laughs> to get the clock crazy. Yeah. <laughs> crazy so many good conversations I think we all came to you for counsel all the time the thing that I love the most is the, the laughter. I mean, we, you used yeah. to come by and say, you guys, you've got to be quiet. <laughs> we were just <laughs> we were hysterical outside in, the, in that yeah. little kiosk sometimes. Yeah. I could not stop laughing. Yeah, we had some good times there. Yeah, we did. Katie, how do you feel about Center for Yoga and your time there? And how do you feel about it closing its doors? I actually have been thinking about this and wondering how you feel too, because it's like, I moved away. I already had said goodbye to it. I'd already gone in for my last time and already knew I wasn't going to be there anymore. But mm. at the same time, I mean, I had worked there for so long and then moved on and went to other studios. It always was still going to be there and still be that special place for everyone who needed it. For me, I felt like it came into my life at exactly when I needed that space, those people, the practice, everything lined up exactly so perfectly to really nurture me and hold me through one of the hardest times of my life. And I, I grew up at Center for Yoga. It feels like I went through so much growth and change in that space and with you guys and all of the other people that were there that it to think that that space isn't there for other people to experience that beautiful growth and transformation so sad that place is special it should still be there it is still there because it, it's it's there in your heart you know and it's there you yeah. know where you are right now whether you believe it or not what is there now and all of the people that will pass through its walls We'll be touched by it in some way. And that's not for us to, to worry about, but it, it was and is special. It just, it just will be. You know, it was touched by Fred Astaire at some point. It was touched by- uh, Masons. Right, the Masons. <laughs> that touched us as much as 
yeah. the Center for Yoga will, all those other people. It was a special place, is a special place. Larchmont, the whole of a Larchmont. I remember doing a um, loving kindness uh, meditation with Sharon Salzburg. Yeah, Salzburg. And we went out and walked up and it was a silent walk up and down the street that you you were paying attention to the street if there was a person who came in front of you you know you were extending loving kindness to them and and again it was kajaya kajaya who was really beyond yoga he he did, i didn't ever see him do yoga did you <laughs> but he, he took no. susan bones class did he oh, oh oh okay of course he was the setup man for that but he said it was like you could see little invisible stars up and down oh. larchmont as we were passing by each other you know mm -hmm. all up and down the street and when i was doing energy work that was the way i've envisioned it too i envisioned light coming out of who, whoever I was working on and it following down the stairs, trickling out, <laughs> um, trickling out down the stairs, down the street, all over the city. That will always be it for me. And I really am not going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Jacqueline and Sally, how do you feel about it closing? Do you have any attachment? I mean, we've all been gone, actually. We've all had our proper goodbye, but I still feel brokenhearted. When I saw the online stuff of Yoga Works physical spaces were closing, I think I went through stages of grief, like, no, 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 just not Center for Yoga. Like, they'll keep Maine and Montana at Center for Yoga, that's it, you yeah. know, or some rich person is going to buy it, you know, it's just like denying it happening, because I just love it. I love that space so much. But how, what was your feeling about it? And I don't know if you feel comfortable, Jacqueline, talking about your experience, because it was such a heartbreaking goodbye. Yeah, because when I first left, it wasn't, we all know, the separation and all that stuff with, with yoga works. But so I, it was hard for me to go back in there. Well, I'd go to Larchmont, but I didn't really want to stop in. It was just hard. It was just hard. I hadn't really dealt with it, I don't think. And then when I found out they were closing, I, I think I wrote something on Facebook. And then Barbara Reen reached out to me and invited me to come to say goodbye. And, you know, I walked up the stairs at... It was the people, you know, I realized the space was there. It did, It was kind of un, unrecognizable to me in a way, yeah. but then everyone started coming. We were only supposed to go there like one at a time, but we all kind of ended up staying. It was the people. It was you, Kim. It was Jean Heileman. It was Joan Hyman. It was, it was all of the great teachers. And Natalie DuBose was there who I hadn't seen one of my, you know, one of the front desk uh, women. And I, that's what it was about. And, and Sally's right. That space was the container for all of that love and all of that inspiration and all of those deep conversations, the searching for our authenticness, you know, and our love. And that's what I came away with. It wasn't the building, even though I can't imagine it being anything else than a yoga studio. I think that's what was my realization. When did you really become connected to it? Center for Yoga? Yeah. Day one. Yeah. When was day one? 2004. My backstory is that I moved to LA. I'd been teaching in New York for like four years, I think. Yeah. And being in my 20s, I called every single yoga studio in Los Angeles. Hi, I've just moved to LA. I'm a yoga teacher hire me or I could be on your sub list yeah. every studio and only two called me back Mark Stevens from LA Yoga which turned into Yoga Works Westwood right and Lisa Hasse really I think I started subbing she had a Tuesday 2:30 to 4 class and after subbing for a while and maybe she knew it was going to change hands and it would be more complicated for yeah. me to get in. And Sally, I think that's where like the magic goddesses, mystic thing that <laughs> got me in there. She gave me that class, you know, started in the small room and then go upstairs and then big room. And, and it became a Tuesday, Thursday, though it's like started right. as one day a week. I think that was my favorite. My longest held class, I think I taught it for like 13 or 14 years. My longest held class, my beloved level one. I remember I used to go to that class all the time. Love that class. Love that class. Love that class. Especially in the, uh, in the big room. When yeah. it was in the big room, it was like, again, it was like magic. 
and and you could see every single one of your students were like ah you know they'd come out it seems like christine and gary were there yeah there was a lot of political unrest going on there that's what's amazing to me that as much love like Jacqueline is saying that it, it was coupled with as it always is with a lot of turmoil as well you know for us to, to work through when did you start uh, it was 2007 I remember you sitting on the bench waiting for you wasn't I late I was late or I forgot mm -hmm. I forgot that I had an interview and you were so <laughs> oh, yeah let's just go in here we went in the small room sat on yoga chairs a younger chairs oh did we <laughs> yeah yeah, you were adorable. Did I hire you on the spot? I can't remember. I don't think so. I think that later that afternoon you called me and you had, I think there were like Monday through Thursday, you had opening shifts and you're like, I want to give you two to start off with. Cause you did, you know, you didn't want to give somebody four days if they weren't going to work out in early right. mornings, you know, it's too, yeah. too big of a responsibility. That's right. Which was smart. I learned a lot from you. Yeah, we all did. Yeah. And then I remember like, it was like the most beautiful thing to go into the empty studio when it was still dark outside Yeah, and then turn off the alarm, turn on all the lights, make the tea. Yeah. Yeah, it and was. The great thing about it closing is that since I heard about it until now, living in the past, like I'm living in my memory so much and I'm remembering all these events that happened in these conversations and these people and uh, Krishna Das's kirtan. He was there and performing, and we were sitting outside, you and me and Luca, and <laughs> it was like a time when everything was like quieting down in the big room. And all of a sudden, you got mail. <laughs> Do you remember that? I seem to I remember feel like there's that. like a story for everything. Yeah. There is. I've been thinking about the ladies' night. You had like a a women group. Oh yeah. Yes. I, I hadn't been in the center for yoga aside from like during school hours, you know, it was yeah. something different to be there yeah. on its own. Yeah. Oh yeah. Remember it rained. It poured. It rained. All of a sudden poured. it poured from nowhere. Pouring. I remember that. It was after we were doing a chant and it was yes. a really strong chant and we were all in a circle. Yeah. And all of a sudden, from nowhere, this rain came pouring down, like in yeah. buckets. Mm. And it hadn't been raining before. It was really bizarre. Yeah. Nothing touched Center for Yoga. It, it just didn't. And uh, it was like home, you know. Oh, oh, I found my home, you know. After feeling like you were on the outside for so long, you know. Granted, that was, that was my own stuff that I was bringing in there. But yeah, definitely. Katie, did you think of a story? I think about the time when I was there by myself. Natalie was teaching yin yoga in the little room. Mm -hmm. The first class of the day. It was Peter. Because I, I came into the second shift on while you were there. And a pipe burst. Water's just flowing like out of the wall. Down the stairs. Down the stairs. Natalie's class had just ended and we just grabbed blankets and sh shoved them. It was coming from that wall yeah. at, right at the top of the stairs where uh, that big credenza desk. Yeah. 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 Oh man. And it was, oh my gosh, what do we do? How do we shut the water off? <laughs> you called the fire department. Yeah. 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 I remember that. Because yeah. then by the time I got there, I didn't see the, the original insult. By the time I got there, there was actually water coming out of the uh, light implements boutique area and I remember mm -hmm. thinking okay this is just a teeny bit too weird for me I actually wasn't working when this happened but I remember you guys telling me about someone in the middle of the afternoon came in and just cleared off the shelves of shoes just like had a big garbage bag and just swept all of the shoes oh, yeah. off of the shelves and like and they were gone they yeah, everybody was, they were gone. Everybody was so mad you know everybody I think they didn't go up the stairs. I think they just cleared it. It was yeah. one of those times when there were there were classes and they just picked up whatever they could and yeah. you know, ran down the street, I guess. Didn't Steve yeah. Walter always say, you know, yoga attracts all kinds. Yes. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah. so, so, you know, the energy of the place was attracting all kinds, even a squirrel, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah I wasn't there. Were you there, Katie, when the squirrel came in? I got there after I came in for the second shift and Kate had been there by herself and she's like oh my gosh you're not gonna believe what just happened 
got there and she's like, I just had to chase a squirrel out of here. It had apparently gotten up the stairs and into the boutique area. And she's like, I had like this broom and I was trying to like knock it out of the clothes. It had climbed up in clothes. It she's went like, into the clothes. Hitting... Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. She's like, I kept hitting the clothes with the shirt, trying to make it fall. You know, it fell down, but then like she couldn't chase it back towards the stairs. I remember she took, she, it was on the hanger on with the clothes and she took the hanger with the clothes and the squirrel and she brought it outside. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh. <laughs> well, that energy attracts all kinds. Yeah, all kinds. <laughs> it's true. I remember yeah. Steve Walter, yeah. the evening shifts, he'd come in to teach his class and he'd just, he'd come in like half an hour early and just be stretching on that railing at the top of the stairs. So he was the teacher who brought me in. He used to uh, work over here in the valley. Wow. And I just followed him over. Yeah. So I remember being in my office upstairs, one of his on the Larchmont. And it was Sunday morning, Fred Miller's class. And there was a student, I'm not going to say her name. I'm Bless her heart. But it absolutely had to be silence during Shavasana. Like no street noise, no hallway noise, no talking, <laughs> no like nothing. So I remember getting to be the end of his class. And I think he was upstairs at that point. So it was like right near the end of his class. <laughs> and I look outside and there is one of his students, because there's a, a barking dog. Oh, that's and right. <laughs> and this student determined to have like some moment of Shavasana <laughs> that's silenced walked outside, crossed the street to the west side of Larchmont, walking up and down to try to find the owner of the bar. <laughs> and I, I watched her, I got a kick out of that so much. I mean, I just was like, wow, you know. <laughs> but the things we, the things our monkey mind does to us. Yeah. You know what I mean? The things that you we- You must be quiet. Like you yes, can reason with the dog, you yeah. know? And what she gave up in that moment. It was a lesson for me, you know, watching that. What she gave up in that moment to be right about it, you know, to make a point about it. It was, you know, it was a lesson for me to watch that because it was her right to have peace and quiet, but in a way it was the dog's right to bark. <laughs> You know what I mean? It was all so perfect, but it's sometimes the contrast in the space and what was happening within the space sometimes was you had to have a sense of humor, you know, because we're funny. Humans are funny. And yoga gave us that sometimes that moment for us to just be peaceful, to just quiet our mind and to be present. Yeah, that was funny. That was, that was funny, you know, because you have to see, I have to see parts of myself in that. You know, like Sally said, what is that? Like you spot it, you got it, right? You spot it, you got it, right? And just like me, just like me. Hey, Kim, do you have a story of a student that, that was either funny or just really like touching or opening for you? I'll tell you a funny story, not involving a student. Okay. I taught Monday night gentle yoga upstairs right after Ashtanga Mysore. Hot, stinky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh steamy doors closed yeah gross I remember that yeah so I would go in and open the patio and open the windows and there was one window that would not stay open I don't know if you remember this so the thing was you would put a wood block in the window to keep it open so it would like air out uh -huh. and one day I don't know if I was trying to move it or take it out I don't know what it fell out the window toward oh. Larchmont Boulevard. And I was horrified, like it had killed somebody. <laughs> it was the, the heavy wood, the oh. heaviest wood block ever. <laughs> and, you know, I opened the window, quickly looked out. And luckily, the awning from Baskin and Robbins oh. was right there. <laughs> and it just went absorb. Boing. Oh my God. <laughs> so funny i thought i killed somebody that's so ah, funny. can you imagine <laughs> walking down large mob booker ah here i am ah yeah yeah that's the bullet there it's such a such a special place and the big question i think you guys have already answered it is like was it the 
space or was it the people? Yeah. I'm sad that it's closing its doors, but I do think what's coming forward is people are saying, this is good. Yeah. Something new is going to happen there. Yeah. And that room with those high ceilings, it's got to be something special. It has to be something special. Well, we'll see. I have a little surprise for you. My lighting's so bad in my room, but I don't know if you can see. Yes! Oh, the shoes! Oh, you did it! <laughs> That's great. Barbara Reem said I could take that, so yeah. Are you going to hang it up? Oh, it's hung, yeah. <laughs> You know? Oh, that's great. I always remember I walked in there for my interview and didn't see that sign with the shoe with the line through it. And I walked up there with my shoes and Jan Halpern, excuse me, you've got to take off your shoes. And I'm like, oh, okay. Never done an interview barefoot before, but okay. That's oh, so good. Jan. I love Jan. Yeah. And then I remember sitting at that front desk and just getting so like, how could you dare walk in here with your shoes? <laughs> Years later, I'm like so yeah. righteous sitting there. And then the cell phone, it was just, it was just getting harder and harder to, to have people understand that. It was just becoming the norm. I, I think as more yoga studios were opening, it was just becoming the norm to just, you know, walk in. I remember Drew, Drew Barrymore. I was like, Drew, you can't have shoes in here. You know what I mean? Like, why are you, why are you in your shoes? She goes, I forgot something. She was really, oh, oh, did I do I that? Oh, no. I felt though that even when Yoga Works took control of Center for Yoga, we still stayed our own. Yes, we were Yoga Works, but I don't know if any of you can speak to this, but I felt like Center for Yoga was, we were doing our own thing and we stayed that eclectic school. Well, they retained the name. I think that was Lisa's doing. I think, uh, yeah, I think Lisa had a lot to do with that. It will retain the name Center for Yoga. It will have that on. And it and for a long time it didn't even have yoga works on it. Yeah. It was still CFY, you know. Yeah. I don't know when it really started to change though. But uh, you know, eventually things do though when when another company takes over. But yeah, we were kind of an island. We were way on the east side. <laughs> you know. No one really came to us very often. And it was very old Hollywood, you know, yeah. it some of that as well. The ship was running itself in a way. You know? It was yeah. in a lot of ways. Well, yeah. you know, you can't say that, Jacqueline. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know what I mean, though? It already had a foundation. It was already really established. Well established, yeah. Yeah. But I, I would say, Jacqueline, you were the captain of that ship. Yeah, I would say so too. Very no. definitely. Yep, it's unanimous. Well, thank you. It's, that's that's yeah. uncomfortable. To, that's uncomfortable. I don't know why. That's uncomfortable? Really? I don't know. Step back in there for a minute. Yeah. Step back in there. Step back into that time and, and just think yeah. about it. See if you can see yourself. I think the studio with everyone it made me become a people person. <laughs> it really changed my life. It became about who are you? You know, I mean, it just really became about that for me. Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. Well, I felt Jacqueline that you, you did the business. You were kicking ass, getting things done, but then you had the other side. And I respected that you didn't want to be friends. Like we, when we were there, it was like, we were friendly, but we were not friends, but you could still be real. And I did feel like Yes, you were getting the business done and all the organization working so hard to really to be the captain of the ship. But then there was this other side. And I remember days going into your office a little like on the verge of tears. I don't know, Jacqueline, if I'm going to be able to get through this class. And, you know, just just having you as you were a real person. And I've never really had a manager who was able to handle both sides like that that I really appreciated and yeah. to this day Jacqueline you're the best manager that I've ever worked with hands down thank you Kim yeah. uh, thank you that's very kind it like I said it's very difficult for me to like to receive that but I thank you I think of things of how I could have done things so much better you know I guess that's hindsight is twenty twenty. I just, I wish I would have maybe brought that a little earlier, the, the human side. Anyway. It happened exactly the way it was. Yeah. 
it yeah. did you know it did yeah yeah but as you said it was an evolution like you yeah. felt it shift yeah i remember seeing that shift too i would be there in the morning a lot of times by myself and then you'd come in grab all your stuff and then you'd come out there and sit next to me with all your piles of things that you had to get done made the effort to take it from your office bring it out so that we could just sit together and kind of just chit chat but you know you still had the things to do and you still had to do all the administrative work of managing the studio i loved you katie i love talking to you i loved yeah, our conversation i loved talking to you it was oh like my favorite thing <laughs> my favorite thing about working yeah. there was like the times when you had between classes yeah <laughs> your dog? yeah <laughs> here's another question for you guys how do you think the closures of the physical spaces, in particular Center for Yoga, will change the landscape of yoga moving forward after this pandemic is over? Best for a teacher in a way. I don't know. What what would that what is that gonna be like? I think COVID has done that in itself because it's taking us back to ground zero, you working alone, getting on that mat and finding the guru inside, you know, there still needs to be adjustment there and there still needs to be a teacher. But having gone to that bottom level, it's gonna peel off the people who are ready to do more yoga or those who did it because, you know, whatever they were, they wanted to have a nice looking butt, you know? Uh, and that's not to say that that isn't just as legitimate as anything else, you know? But I do think it may have peeled off me as well because I'm I'm really struggling to have any kind of practice anymore because my energy level is so whacked. I think it it will bring back yoga in, in a completely different way, and and people will see it in a different might see it in a different way. In a deeper way, do you think? A deeper, more? I don't know. I I don't know from deeper. How is it for you two, both you and Katie? Are you yeah. Katie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm back in the studio. We started back up in September. We keep the windows open. There's only, you know, class sizes are limited and there's like tape on the floor that show where to put your mat. So you're far enough away from everyone. You have to wear a mask until you get on your mat. We take everyone's temperature as they come in. Oh, wow. Uh, at first I was really scared to do it. I thought I'm teaching outside now. It's great. Love it. It's hot and humid, but yoga is yoga you know it's okay but now we're back in the studio and the third week that I was teaching in the studio I had two students so it was a very small class a week after that I got a message from one of the students that she had tested positive for COVID <gasps> she had been in contact with someone the Wednesday before my class was on Saturday so this was three days after she had been exposed wow so I immediately went and got tested it was negative that was scary it was really scary because I thought about it's been a week that I've possibly had this and who all have I seen and talked to and where have I gone and it was my test was negative so that reassures me that the distancing and the masks is working that's helpful I'm the one who's talking if I'm positive they're they're all very likely more likely to get it than I'm to get it from them that's a big responsibility it's hard teaching from your mat, not walking around the room. It's hard not adjusting people. I just started teaching a beginner series. Thursday was the first night of that. And it's like, how do you not adjust people in downward dog? Like when they're doing it for their first and second and third time, like it's yeah. tough because they don't have necessarily the body awareness to hear your instruction and do it in their body. I'm having to let go of a lot of the alignment. And a lot of it is like, how is this feeling in your body? And that's more important than whether you're actually being able to hug your outer arms in and lift up through the inner edges of the shoulder. You know, like I have to let a lot of that go and just focus on the other aspects of it. But I am happy to see that people are coming back in the studio and I'm hopeful that we're in a place where cases are pretty steady. It's not rising, it's not declining. So I'm hopeful that like when that starts to happen more consistently, more studios in Los Angeles will open back up. Maybe Yoga Works will open Center for Yoga back up. Maybe they'll get it back. I don't know. No, they, they let go of the lease. They're, it's gone, Katie. They were showing it to people when I went there. 
Well, I know they have to. I mean, yeah. it's money, you know? Yeah. That's what people need. They need yeah. to make money. Yeah. Well, it's interesting to me because uh, Christine and Gary, it was such a wrench for them to leave. And they really wanted the space. They really wanted to be able to, to buy Center for Yoga, but they couldn't. Yeah. Uh, and now here they are still existing and in, in, in their little place and, and still doing yoga. It's pretty amazing. Wow. So liberation still going. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Yep. Are they having classes? Yeah. In fact, uh, Christine mentioned they were having one up on the rooftop. I don't know how they do that. Because oh, yeah. it could be outside. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Yeah, we talked about the rent when I was there because uh, I know it was probably a little over 10000 when Lisa sold it to Yoga Works. Someone mentioned it was probably over 20, 25 Wow. a month. So imagine just trying to, you know, yeah. obscene rent, you know. Yeah. What do you wish would go there if it can't be a yoga studio? Dancing. Well, One that's my- what it was for a long time. Yeah. That, uh, Fred Astaire Studio. Yeah. I don't know. And that office space where your office was, Sally, that is just to me is, uh, you know, just such a beautiful space up there. You know, It is absolutely knockout. Like if people were doing something special, if they were meditating down there, it was like you could feel the room. Being, it's just like it, it was in the floorboards and on the walls and, you know, and because you were high perched, you could feel all of it. You know, if they were singing down there, it was like that wafted up. It was truly amazing. I love that space. So I can imagine it being a, a sound studio or something. It certainly certainly has the acoustics for that. You know, all of the wood in the big room and everything. And then having the, the console up, up above, I could see that happening. AD recorded his album there live. Well, that's true. Yeah, he did. He did it? He did, yeah. yeah. We were afraid that the power was, they were going to blow all the power. Damn near did. Really? Yeah. And there was this high buzz. I remember there was this buzzing yeah. sound and it was from the lights. <laughs> yes. 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 What about the ghosts of Center for Yoga? What was the deal with the ghosts? It's so funny. I never, we were talking about that when we were there. You know, there were many times that I was opening in the morning and I couldn't sleep. And sometimes I get there at 4 a.m. I, I never felt. Yeah any presence you know or heard any weird but I've heard stories I mean Kajaya was on here I think he would tell you stories I remember standing in that little alcove that they eventually made outside of that upstairs room in the bathroom and then the little faux kitchen and I remember uh, Kajaya and I were talking about we were laughing actually about uh, about ghosts and uh, I started saying well all you have to do is to get rid of bad vibes is you just, you know, clap your hands and slowly from its position of being closed, the faux kitchen door opened. <laughs> <laughs> we both started laughing. It was like, <laughs> I would say that there's an energy to the place. And I yeah. would say, I know Gary used to say that. Gary's mom used to work on, in the upstairs office And I remember one time being there late and hearing what I thought was Gary coming down the stairs from the upper office where he was with his mom, Uh but it wasn't Gary. There was nobody there. And I said, Gary, are you there? No. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think there was, as there is in any place, there's a certain energy, but as, as Jacqueline says, I never felt uh, there was any kind of any bad vibe at all I I almost want to say you know playful yeah I mean my question is sort of like the energy if we leave traces of ourselves maybe it's not like ghosts like think of like yeah person but the energy like Fred Miller and Frank White something they said 10 years ago and it's still kind of in the molecules of the right Gene Heileman wrote me (laughs) emailed me and said, I'm going to do a walkthrough of Center for Yoga. Tell me if there's anything you want me to do. I thought she was the only one. (laughs) Uh, I hadn't cried about Center for Yoga yet. Denial. And I'm writing her back and I'm weeping. Can you please put your hand on the wall where we were teaching and say my name? Like, Like, am I still there? 
are we still uh, there? You like, are there. It, it, it's like it, we never leave, you know, we never leave. That's what Raman Maharshi said all of his, as he was dying. And they all said, "Where? what will we do without you? And he goes, what are you talking about? I'll still be here, you know, where am I going? Where would I go? Fred Astaire was still there. Yeah. All of those Masons were still there. And who else, who knows who else was there? Maybe Charlie Chaplin. When I was there just recently, I felt your presence, Kim. You did? And Sally, of course. Oh, how did you feel it? The memories of the classes I took, the conversations I had. Yeah. The, the, the exchange of, of just everyday, you know, scene. You were there. I have chills right now. You were, oh my God. Of course she was there. Yes. yes, yes. Steve Walter is still there. You know, yes. I mean, I, they're so clear and crisp in my head yes. and yeah. in my heart and laughing with Katie in the morning and, and with Jan and, yeah. you, know, you know, we were all, we all brought our own quirkiness to the, yeah. to the place and it's there. It's almost like it drew us there, you know, to me. Yeah. In your lovely classes, Kim. Like, oh, oh my yeah. gosh. Oh my God, and the shavas, the sweet shavasanas that mm -hmm. you give us. And when you could bring your bowls. Oh, oh yes. yeah, yeah. Beautiful, and your your just your calming, supportive demeanor, everything about you, your vulnerability. Right. Oh, oh absolutely. You. I, like you said that. earlier, Jacqueline, it's so hard to take the compliments. It's hard to receive, but receive it, breathe it in. Yeah, if there's any gift that it's giving to us now, yeah. it's being able to look back and saying, yeah, I was there. I gave, whether I was taking somebody's key card or whether I was just being a student, I was there. I was contributing and I was contributing and I was getting something, mm -hmm. whether I knew it or not, whether I fought it or not, whether I was able to receive it or not, I can receive it now. And here we are, four of us. Here we are. Here we are, still friends and still talking. Yeah, like we never left, really. I mean, yeah, it's like, you ever. know, as fresh like, as it ever was. Yeah. And I'll be forever young, and, uh, and you will too. You know, you'll be forever in my mind, you know, etched at that age. It's a gift of time, a gift of Center for Yoga. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Kim. And I love you. Love you too. I love you too. I love you three. <laughs> I love you four. <laughs> no, I do. No, I do. <laughs> well, thank you so much for doing this, and we should do it again. <laughs> so where should we, should we should do it again. We should I'm do it. I'm the wine next time. I'm gonna bring some wine. I am. I'm gonna. I am. <laughs> Let's seal it. Can you give us a, a mini shavasana or a thought? Oh man, I feel like the stories continue. Is like our yeah, life. yeah. There's yeah. still that energy. So it would be about gratitude, gratitude for the time that we had together, and that includes this this circle of loving friends right now. Thank you for being there, you guys, for being there for me because. Sometimes when it gets really rough, you know, <laughs> I didn't think I would cry. Sometimes it helps to remember, you know, that you have friends, especially, you know, when you're sick or something and you feel like, you know, you're so alone. And then everybody came back with all of those memories. And it was, it was so, uh, it means so much to me. And the place did, will continue, will continue. Will continue. Namaste. Namaste. I love you. Love you all. Bye. 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 Big kisses. <laughs>